We're going to go into L. We're going to go to right L1 frame in here. Okay, can we angle to, um, let's angle to the head a tiny bit. Picture. Okay, oblique to us a little bit, tiny bit. Stop picture. Huh, what's that big circle in there? The table. The table. Huh, that looks weird. Um, hmm. Yeah, because <laughs> it's like. <coughs> All right, picture. Sorry, thanks. Okay, there we go. Can we move it towards you a bit? <sighs> okay, so we're going to do a uh, placement of a DRG stimulator lead here. And for this, <clears throat> we're going to, our target here is going to be the L1 foramen on the right side. Uh, in order to do that, picture. So, picture. Picture. Our target's going to be essentially right to the to the right of that needle, and in, so in order to get into that space, we're going to enter picture. Picture. We're, we want to be in the center of that interlaminar space. So in order to do that, picture, we're going to touch the needle picture, essentially right here on the bone, but we're going to enter from the nine o'clock position of the pedicle below. Picture. 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 Okay, so I'm going to enter in and plan on having bone as my endpoint of the laminate above. Picture. Let's do far lateral. Picture. 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 And we're going to do loss of resistance in a typical way. And uh, one of the main important points of this is picture is getting into the center picture, the center of the space. Because if we're over, if our target's on this side and we enter here, we have to go over the cord and out. It makes it more challenging. So if we could get it right in the middle, that's, that's what our goal would be. <clears throat> we're going to put in the introducer. I have it loaded with a stylet. Uh, at first, so it, when we get to the foramen, I can use this to get through the ligaments of the foramen. So we have to place it. You have to be kind of careful putting it in because it can bend. The introducer um, can kink. And the first line is going to mean that we're at the end of the TUI needle. Picture. So at this point, what we'll do is, because I know I'm in the middle, can we angle to the feet to just line up the bottom end plate of L1? A little more? Perfect. Okay, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to angle my bevel towards that foramen, and I'm going to... Picture. I want to turn that introducer, picture, to exit, picture, picture, it's not, picture. Picture. Yeah, thanks. Get my hand out. Appreciate. Thank you. Picture. Okay. Picture. Okay. So we're pretty much right there. So I'm going to unscrew the top of our introducer and I'm going to just gently with a staccato technique try to get through the frame and I felt something pop. Picture. So we have to be careful not to bend the introducer when we're doing this. So you've got to be really kind of gentle with everything. Because if the introducer bends, then you're not going to, it's, sometimes it could be difficult getting the lead in and out. So basically we're parked at the entrance picture of the foramen. And you can see that little, our little dot right there is the end of the stylet of the introducer, I mean. And we're going to advance the lead. Picture. And so you see we're coming out. Advance a little bit more picture. It's taking a 
rostral angle, which is okay, picture. And so we have currently the two, the second and third contact under the pedicle, which is good. I'm gonna picture. I'm gonna now advance the lead through picture and create this superior loop. And at this point, I wanna take out my introducer, my stylet wire, because if we don't, and you make your whole loop, sometimes you can't get the wire out, and then you gotta take it all out. So I'm gonna now back our introducer back into the TUI needle, and that's gonna be right there. And at this point, I'm gonna turn the TUI needle kind of towards the feet, and I'm gonna advance the, the lead again, picture, and we have our S loop. And so, picture, at this point, it's got, I got a nice little loop in there. One last picture. And then let's go lateral and, and see what it looks like. <clears throat> that is some other. Perfect. So, excuse me. So you can see here, um, here's our frame. And it actually looks like it's going backwards, but that's OK, because we're you, we could use any of these. The yeah, second and third contacts yeah. are the ones we'll use, as long as it's not going forward and coming down here, mm -hmm. because then we're going to get the anterior nerve rootlet. And that's it. So we'll go back up AP. And at that point, we would take the stylet out a little more, advance the Take it out. And that's it. Picture. Get it. Good job. Good. Thank you. Okay. So why do a loop? So it doesn't move. Does it migrate? So, so why did you? Because it seemed like you purposely went. Yeah. So it's it. called it's called the, the S loop, and the reason for that is because the you're creating this loop, and when in the lower lumbar, essentially, you don't have to anchor the lead. Mm -hmm. So you create this loop, and you could actually make a little more of a loop if you wanted. And then you can use a tunneled epidural technique. And to do that, we would simply, so say this was a pocket over here. We would So instead of making an incision in the midline, which is slick, we actually published this a couple of years ago, um, we use a tunneled epidural catheter technique and you go from the pocket and get it through the And now there's no midline incision. So in the lumbar segments, the lower lumbar, that's good. Um, we've been doing work in the, in the upper lumbar and, and lower thoracic, and because that distance is farther and the, the movement of, those, of that thoracolumbar junction, you, you have to be more worried about lead migration. So we, if, if we would do that there, no, we would put the loops below as well, but it, we would also anchor these. We'd make a midline incision and anchor at that level. So, yeah. so what would yeah. be the incidence of um, lead migration? Well, that's a, that's a good question. In the lower, um, I don't think there's enough data out there for it. But in the upper, uh, there are two studies, um, uh, Calaward and, and Hoyan studies that had, one had 14 patients and the other had around the same, maybe 15 patients. And they had four migrations in each of theirs, which is, which is it doesn't sound like that much. And, and in our case series, which had 17 patients with a total of 49 leads, so 2.9 leads per patient, mm -hmm. we had three migrations. Okay, that doesn't sound like a lot, yeah. but when you're talking about 17 patients and three, mi three migrations, and when they migrate, they need to be revised. So out of 17 patients, three had to be, go back to have the leads move. So it's not, you, you gotta make that, you gotta anchor. So since we started making the midline incision anchoring, so that's 25%, 25%, 20%, that's a big percent, man, mm. that have to go back. So you, you, yeah. 
because the distance is too far, you know, it takes and it adds like a tw 20 minutes to the case. It's annoying because this, look at that. Easy, it's yeah. beautiful. Yeah. And you know, you could actually, so what we, what I would typically do though, I would make, in, right? I would leave the needle in with the two oh, and make a stab incision. And then this way, this way it's not too close to the skin itself because otherwise you can have it um, kind of push up from the skin. Very nice. Yeah. Thank you. Cool. Nice. Thank you. Oh, awesome.